So if you are not here, this is what you missed for the Haitian Revolution, and you are able to get your lecture notes. So what is Haiti? So Haiti does begin as a French colony, as you can see on the map of Saint-Domingue, and remained a French colony from 1697 to 1804. Before that, it was actually an island colonized by the Spanish and Columbus in 1492. And that is why the Dominican Republic is still Spanish speaking on the eastern half of the island. And then Haiti is pretty much French speaking and French Creole on the western side of the island. So why is Haiti important? Haiti is going to become a very good island for producing lots of sugar. They are going to produce so much of it that it actually makes more profit on this small little island than all of the United States at the time. So that's how successful Haiti was for the French because the French were the ones making all the profits, right? Population at the time of rebellion was about 60,000 free people. So that's gonna include 32,000 white and 28,000 black free people. As we saw yesterday, there's gonna be a big group of them and then 500,000 slaves. So the slaves are really out doing them like eight, eight and a half to one for every free person. So this is gonna be a big reason why they realize they can rise up. So those people, there's gonna be four main groups. There's gonna be wealthy white people who are really the plantation owners. There's gonna be the petite blancs who are basically like the poor white people, so also free. There's gonna be free black people, which is gonna be people who've been both freed from slavery and people who were never slaves to begin with. And then there's gonna be the really big slave population. So why does the initial rebellion happen? So when the French Revolution begins, so this is connecting us to our last unit, the wealthy white settlers on Haiti are going to call for their own independence. Basically, they don't want to be part of the French Revolution. They don't want to still be paying taxes or not still be, but they don't want to be paying taxes because of the way that the French Revolution is restructuring France. So the wealthy white settlers want to keep all the profits for themselves and they are going to call for independence. Meanwhile, the white settlers um, did not want to give citizenship to free black people. So they wanted it for themselves. But they didn't want to give the free black people, I'm not talking about the slaves, just the free black people. They didn't want to give them citizenship. Meanwhile, the petite blancs, again, kind of the poor white people, wanted independence so that they could get the right to vote. All of this is kind of happening all at once. And then slaves are starting to begin to escape their masters. So now we're going to see in the chaos of all this, why the slaves were able to rise up. And that is going to lead to the first real rebellion of this, the Buchman Rebellion. There's going to be a slave, as you can see here, Duty Buchman. And he is going to begin a slave rebellion against wealthy white owners and the Petit Blancs. So pretty much all the white people on the island, he is going to start a rebellion against them and get the slaves to all rally behind him. And within a few weeks, 100,000 slaves are going to join the rebellion. They're going to realize how much they outnumber all the white people on the island, right? And now a lot is going to start happening, and it kind of goes back to the French Revolution. So in 1793, France is now at war with Great Britain and with Spain. As you remember, they a lot of these other European countries are fighting against France because they want them to reinstate a monarch. So the British are going to invade the island and restore slavery. So they're basically going to take that slave rebellion and put it down, and the British are trying to take the island for themselves now. Meanwhile, Spain invades from the other side with the slaves against France. So again, Spain controlled this part of the island. So you can see the border here. They're basically going over the border. So the British are attacking from this side and the Spanish are attacking with the slaves from this side. However, France with the French Revolution is actually going to free the slaves who fight for the French army. So now they're gonna kind of have this counterattack because all the slaves are now joining with the French to fight back against these two other colonial powers. 
in the following year, all slavery in France and French territories is going to be abolished. Um, if you do remember, Napoleon actually tries to reinstate it, but we will actually be getting to that later. But so now the Haitians are kind of thinking under France, it wouldn't be the worst thing. It wouldn't be as bad as being under the British or the Spanish, because at least if it's a French territory, there won't be slavery. Then comes in to Saint Louverture. He is a former slave who initially joins the Spanish in fighting. Because again, remember the Spanish first had the slaves um, to fight against the French, but then when France frees the slaves, he is going to join that side. So shortly after France abolished slavery, he switches to the French side. He is going to lead an army to force the Spanish back onto their side of the island. And his army is gonna be very successful. He's a very good military commander. And with the help of the French army, they do successfully kick the British out. So they are fighting back against the Spanish and they are successful in kicking out the British. So now it's gonna be a little weird because now the United States, a newly freed country is actually going to help. Uh, so with the help of the US Navy, Toussaint is gonna gain control of the entire country after defeating French General Andre Rigal and the French army. So why is the US getting involved? Basically to stir up some chaos, um, just to fight back against both of these countries. Um, they're not really supporting the Haitian people because at this point, the US still has slavery, so they don't really wanna show that slave revolts can be successful. But the need to kind of stick it to the British and the French outweighs that other thing. Um, and so then Toussaint Louverture actually becomes dictator of a free Haiti and doesn't outright reinstate slavery, but he's kind of trying to force them back onto their plantations. Then Napoleon is going to come into the picture, if you remember. Um, Napoleon, again, tried to um, restore slavery to France and the French Empire. And so he wants the profits from Haiti. So he's going to send French troops back to reconquer Haiti. Again, they had just become free. So he's gonna send the French troops and they are actually pretty successful at the beginning um, at defeating these Haitians. Um, France had a very good military. And so they are actually going to bring Toussaint Louverture back to France to try to negotiate some peace. And Toussaint is actually going to surrender and basically give up the country back to France if they can agree to abolish slavery. However, the French do retake control of Haiti and they basically lie to, to Saint Louverture and imprison him where he does eventually get killed and France does not agree to their end of the deal and they do reinstate slavery. So that is going to lead to the last rebellion. So there's gonna be a former Lieutenant under to Saint Louverture. It's gonna be this guy Dessalinier and he is going to lead a new slave revolt against the French. Again, we've kind of seen, like with that document we analyzed uh, last class, um, they were pretty successful at fighting and they said they were willing to brave death to win their freedom, they're willing to brave death to regain it. So Napoleon is actually going to now send Polish soldiers. Why does that matter? Um, Poland had been conquered by France and so they were technically under the French empire, but they're fighting for French, but when the Polish soldiers get there, they actually side with the Haitians because the Polish people are saying, well, we've been conquered by the French also. We have more in common with the Haitians than we do with the French, even though our skin color is the same. We have more in common with these Haitian people who are being oppressed. And so they are actually going to help the Haitians and fight on their side. Also at this time, as we've seen, Napoleon was in so many wars in Europe so he is essentially going to withdraw his soldiers from Haiti because he um, figures he can just reconquer them later. The British are also going to begin to supply the Haitians with weapons to fight back against the French. And then Dessalines is going to lead the Haitians to finally defeat French, the French after all these withdrawals. And then they do finally fully withdraw by 1804 where he does declare Haiti a free country, 
And the significance is Haiti actually becomes the second free country in the new world. The new world is basically the Western hemisphere after the United States. So again, make sure you do finish your summary and you do have an exit ticket.